The uh, chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Poe, for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, Saturday was a day that Lemire, Lanier Middle School students from Houston, Texas, had been looking to, forward to for a long time. They were going to get to see where the President of the United States lives. This was even more exciting because it was the first time in five years that Lanier had been successful in scheduling a tour of the White House. Then last week, two days before they were set to go on their tour, they got the bad news. They were no longer welcome in the People's House. Mr. Speaker, I know one of the parents of the kids at Lanier Middle School. Here's what she said. It's disappointing because it's particularly disappointing to me because I think it teaches the kids a bad lesson of not keeping your word. That's bad for our kids. Harvin Moore, a trustee from the Houston Independent School District, wrote the White House when he got the bad news, and here's what he said. Next week, 80 students from Lanier Middle School in Texas will be spending spring break touring the nation's capital. They have been planning the trip for over a year. They have completed the background checks, received confirmation that they would be welcomed at the White House. And as you can imagine, they are very excited about that. Now we find ourselves in a situation and position of having to explain to the students that their plans have been abruptly canceled and that they will not be welcome at the White House after all. Frankly, that's a hard thing to do as we don't understand the reasons ourselves. We don't understand why out of a budget of $1.6 billion, the Secret Services budget, the administration believes that 1 20th of 1% that is required to fund the White House tours is the first thing to be canceled. We don't understand why the administration would choose to cancel the program that touches the public the most in, retru in return from truly a minuscule budget savings. We don't understand, Mr. President, why you have chosen to disinvite school children from their White House. The First Lady has referred to the White House as the People's House. I agree with her. It is the People's House. It is our house. Mr. Moore continued in his letter. One Lanier parent described having to tell her son that he was no longer welcome at the White House. The word sequester doesn't mean anything to this student. First Lady Michelle Obama said that the White House is our house. Well, it doesn't feel like it anymore. Mr. Speaker, Lanier students from Texas are not alone. Thousands of students nationwide are gearing up for spring break. The Cherry Blossom Festival is just a few weeks away. These trip trips require planning, time, and yes, even money. Bake sales, car washes, parents taking time off of work were all involved so kids could come to Washington to tour the White House. But the president, unfortunately, has punished the people for the sake of a few nickels. Perhaps the White House forgot what the First Lady has said, which is posted on the homepage of WhiteHouse.gov. Quote, this is really what the White House is all about. It's the people's house. Well, Mr. Speaker, if this is true, the President should take the padlocks off the White House doors, put the welcome mat back on the front porch, because America's kids should not be evicted from their White House. Mr. Speaker, the open-door philosophy of the White House is a uniquely American idea, where the people of the country can come see where the President of the United States, the most powerful person in the world, actually lives. This is uniquely American. You go to other countries, whether they're democracies or not, they don't let you near the home of where the head leader lives. But only in America have we done this. So, Mr. Speaker, I would encourage the president to keep his word, let the people back in. And if students come to Washington, D.C., they should know that the U.S. Capitol is open for business that members of Congress, their staff, the tour guides at the Capitol Visitor Center will be glad to take them through the Capitol. In fact, earlier this morning, there were about 70 kids from Westchester, New York, seated here before we opened for business, getting a history lesson from one of our parliamentarians. Mr. Speaker, the Capitol is open, but neither the White House 
nor the U.S. Capitol should ever close its doors and ban the people from the people's houses. And that's just the way it is. I yield back. has been a Sunfish production.